Hello, during this session we're going to be thinking about how can we measure the distance to stars. This was an issue uh, first put forward by the earliest astronomers and we're going to try and solve that at least for closer stars for now. So first of all, what does the word parallax mean? You may have come across this term when thinking about a parallax error. So when you're looking at a analog device, depending on the angle which you look at the measuring device depends on the reading that you will have. And this is due to the issue of parallax. Now this becomes very useful when thinking about things from a distance. Here's an example. We have two people looking at a tree. However, the objects in the far distance of this tree are different depending upon which viewpoint you have. Now, using this thinking of considering a uh, distant objects as being fixed, we can use the angles to work out the distance to the object. So how do we do this with stars? Well, with stars, by knowing the distance from the Earth to the Sun, uh, then and the parallax, which is the angle of change dependent on seemingly stationary more distant objects, we can use a bit of trigonometry to find out the distance to that star. There's some tricky terminology here, so let me go through some tricky terminology. Uh, the most ancient familiar way to divide a circle is 360 equal parts. Okay. Now, each one of these is known as an arc degree. Now, each arc degree is further subdivided into 60 arc minutes and further into 60 arc seconds. So, if we think of an angle of 1.754 degrees, and we want to convert it into arc degrees, arc minutes, and arc seconds. So you have to go step by step and dividing each of the points or each of the decimals by 60. So we have 0 0.754 multiplied by 60, we get the whole number. And then we get uh, the smaller parts and we think about it into arc minutes and then arc seconds. So think about this for a moment. Try and do the conversion. This is one of those things you're going to have to do. And therefore 1.754 is uh, 1 degree, 45 arc minutes, and 14.4 arc seconds. So with this first bit of tricky terminology, tricky terminology 2, uh, a parsec is a distance relating to the parallax of one arc second. Okay, so it's actually defined by this. So if we have a parallax of one arc second, we know that the imaginary star is exactly one parsec away. Now, using trigonometry, it gives off this very useful formula which is d, the distance in parsec, is equal to 1 divided by p, which is the parallax angle in arc seconds. As it happens, in most examinations, uh, the IB tends to just give the parallax in arc seconds automatically, and you don't have to do any conversions from degree. But it's worth being aware of that. So if I'm looking at the red star throughout the year, I can see its location compared to those more distant stars seems to change. If I measure this in arc seconds, I can work out the distance of this star. Now remember, I'm looking for the parallax. So that's actually going to be half of the total displacement in the sky as measured in arc seconds. So in this case, my parallax is going to be, look at it carefully, so my parallax is going to be approximately 0 0.5. So that means the observed parallax is 0 0.5, distance equals 1 divided by the observed parallax. 
So that gives me a distance in parsec. So the distance to this star is 2 parsec. Here's some type of questions. I'm looking for answers in meters. Okay. Uh, star series A is a parallax of 0 0.377 seconds of arc. Can you calculate the distance in meters? Alpha Centura has a parallax of 0 0.76 arc seconds. What's the distance to the Earth? And star Bob with a parallax of 0 0.0000024, what is the distance from the Earth? Do these calculations. The last one's the trickiest of these. 8.185 times 10 to the 16 meters. 4.012 times 10 to the 16 meters. And 3.57 times 10 to the 20 meters. Now, note how small our angles really are from this. Okay, this is a very, very small uh, displacement in arc seconds across the sky, and yet we can work out the distance is 3.57 times 10 to the 20 meters. There's some problems with parallax. Problems are. Uh, it's okay for stars which are closer, but we've got to remember atmospheric blurring makes the angle of measurement fairly inaccurate, and that's because the atmosphere is moving around, so having a, a good measurement of the parallax is tricky, and it takes time. Uh, you need to make measurements across a whole year, so fewer than 10,000 stellar parallaxes have been measured to date, and only about 500 of those are accurate, and there's about 10 to the 12 stars in our galaxy. So it's a good method as a starting point. I will introduce some more methods later on in the unit. For now, that is how we can measure the distance of the closest stars 